Praise the Lord. We want to welcome all of us who are watching us on YouTube, Facebook, and all other social media platforms. This is the Empowerment Wednesday, a Wednesday with a difference, a Wednesday where we grow spiritually, a Wednesday where we are supposed to be. I believe each and every one is ready and waiting to hear what God is going to tell us this evening. I want to invite you, all of you, wherever you are watching us from, may you share this uh, live transmission to other people so that they can also be blessed of you. So now, Heavenly Father, we, even as we start, we want to commit this service into able hands. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Our God and our Father, we come before thy presence. We want to thank you for the protection and even for the provisions that you have given us. And now as we start this service, we commit it into your able hands. And we pray that even as we start and move on, until we get to the end, Heavenly Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit of God will be together with us. I commit the praise and worship team into your able hands. And even our vicar, the Reverend Maurice Ameda, even as he comes to share the message that you have put in his heart, how we pray that you, the, the Holy Spirit of God will be upon him, give him clarity of thought, and may the words that will come from his, his mouth be edified by the Holy Spirit of God. We also commit those who are out there watching us online into your able hands, we pray that even as we experience the presence of God in this sanctuary, that it will also be the same with them. We thank you and we honor you. We also want to silence any voices that are contrary to your word. And we pray that they will be defeated in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We, when we start this service, we pray that you'll be together with us. And it's in that mighty and holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray, believing and trusting. Amen. We may be able to just give a round of applause to our God, even for allowing us to be able to come in this service. So praise and worship, kindly take us through this session. Sifiwe. Hallelujah. Msalimi mwenzaku. Say hi to the one, the person on your left and on your right. At home, msalimi mwenzaku ambaye kwa karibu na wewe. Muambia that Jesus still loves us. And even as we wait for the projection of uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. Just tell your neighbor that I am going to be blessed. I am going to be blessed. Sayu unona ni mebarikiwa, bado naenda kubarikiwa. Amen? 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 Amen. How many of us have come with an expectant heart? Yes. We have not come here kubahatisha. We, are, we have come to meet a God that is real, a God that is able, a God that loves us anyway. Amen? I know we have gone through a difficult time. And this verse is just to remind us that God has heard our cry. I know most of us are asking, Hey, God, when are you going to answer my prayer? Is it real that God really answers prayers? But this evening he tells us in 2 Corinthians that he has heard our prayer. This is what 2 Corinthians chapter 6 at verse 2 says. For he says, in an acceptable time, or the time of his favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. In the day of salvation, I helped you. 
And then he says, look now, look, now is the acceptable time or the time of favor. Look, now is the day of salvation. It really applies to me personally. It's not been an easy time. And when I look at this verse, I know that all the prayers that I have brought to him are not, have not been in vain. He has heard them. And he has assured us that he has, he has heard your prayers, my sister, my brother. He has heard your prayers. And he says that in the acceptable, acceptable time, he will send his help. He will help you. Whether atakutuma watu wako ya kusaidie, whether atakutuma malaika, whether atakutuma destiny helpers, he is going to send help to you. There's a place that says that the day of salvation is today. Leo. This is the hour that we have. This is what we have. We cannot talk about tomorrow because we don't know how tomorrow will be. But today, today God says it is the day of salvation. Today is the day that God is going to send help for you. So just for a minute or two, just cry out to God and say, Lord God Almighty, I have cried long enough. And you are assuring me today that it is the acceptable time this is the day of your favor. And that God Almighty, you are saying that you're going to send me your help because you're going to save me today. I am opening my heart. I am laying down my burden, my worries, my anxieties before you, Lord, because you're the one that says that this is the day. This is the day. This is the day. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. Indeed, we bless you, Lord. We worship you. We declare, mighty Father, that none is like you, O God. That you are the almighty one of Israel. We have come just as we are, O God. And we know that, Lord God Almighty, you shall not send us away because you you assure us that you shall neither leave us nor abandon us. Father, we come before you as we are with our loads. And we know that you who says you're going to give us rest, that this day is our day of rest. This evening is our evening of rest. Yes, we have cried to you several times, O oh God. And many times you have asked where you are, Abba Father. But this time you assure us, Lord God Almighty, that you have heard our cry. You have seen our troubled hearts, O oh God. You have seen how we have walked to and fro, Jehovah God, looking for what to do, my God and my master. And this evening, O God, oh God, you're telling us that, yes, you have heard, you have seen, and that your help is coming for us, O oh God. And Father, we are quick to say thank you, Lord. Even if you have not seen your help, Lord God Almighty, we know that you never deceive, you never lie. We say thank you, Thank you, Lord, for the help that is coming for us in our different states, O oh God. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the salvation that is due our way, O oh God. Thank you, Master, because you're beginning a new thing in our lives. We bless you, Lord, and we honor you. And that's why we say, Lord God Almighty, Mbele tunaendelea. Mbele tunaendelea. Haijalishi yale ambayo tumiapitia nyuma. Haijalishi yale ambayo alijaribu kutushika huko nyuma na tukaona kwamba tunaenda kuzama. Tumeamua Bwana kwamba na wewe baba tunaenda kuendelea. Amen. 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 Yes. Pole pole twende hivi. Thank you, Jesus.
proven time and again that you will never let us down, that you cannot be defeated, oh God. And so, Father, we look up on high. Our eyes are fixed on you, Jehovah, because where you take us, Lord God Almighty, is a place that you have planned for, oh God. And your word says that your plan concerning us is good. It is good. It does not matter that now it looks bad, Jehovah. Now it looks like we are defeated, oh God. Now it looks, Lord God Almighty, like we are under, down under Jehovah. But by your word, we trust in it completely. Because you have lifted it above your name. And so my God and my master, we live all at your feet, Jehovah. And ask, Lord God Almighty, even as we go forth, that you will go with us, Lord. Go with us, master. We are in need of you, Lord. We recognize we can do nothing without you, Lord. We need you desperately, Lord. We bless you. We worship you. And we honor you. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. Can you turn to one or two neighbors and just smile at them? Just look at them in their face and just smile at them. And tell them, and tell them, and tell them that we have been talking about a life of a a sustaining freedom and we cannot live a life of sustaining freedom if we keep on walking around with a lot of baggage. So to turn to your neighbor and tell them, my neighbor, turn to the other neighbor if you don't like the one that you just told him, my neighbor, my neighbor, if you want to be blessed, you cannot keep walking around with a lot of baggages. I'm pressing towards the mark of the price of the high calling in Jesus name okay let's go let's sing this song together i press towards the mark of the high calling yeah yeah i press towards the mark of the high calling i'm pressing on to reach my goal i press towards the mark of the high calling I'm pressing you on to reach my goal. I'm pressing you on the mark of the high calling. I press, I press, I press. I press, I press, I press. I press you on the mark of the high calling. I'm pressing on to reach my goal. I press you on the mark.
Come on, say we'll never give up. Fique com 
naendelea naendelea bado natikaza natikaza vive kule sema bado bado nasimama bado naendelea bado natikaza vive kule Sing side to side <laughs> declaring bado nasimama bado najikaza nivike kule Just tell your neighbor Nikohuru. Tell your neighbor Nikohuru. The Bible says that whoever the sun sets free, it's free indeed. Amen. Amen. Whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. And that is why we want to declare that Nikohuru. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just go ahead and worship the Lord. Sapa 
and everlasting Father, that is our declaration that indeed we are free because you've set us free, O Jehovah. And that just as your word says that whomsoever you set free is free indeed. And that is what we declare, not only on our lives, O God, but in the lives of those that we relate with in the life of our church, in the life of our nation, our family, we declare that we are free in the name of the Lord. And Father, as we want to listen to your word, we pray that you minister to us both individually and corporately. And indeed, Jehovah God, let your word live in us and bring a difference, Jehovah God, in all that we do. I pray that by the help of thy spirit also help me to preach your word. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's kindly have our seats. Those who are watching from home, we are also glad that you are with us. And as usual, I request that you can be able to share the links with your friend so that they can also be partakers of this great word that we want to hear from God today. I would want us to turn to our Bibles, the book of First Samuel, chapter 17. And we are reading from verse 32 to 37. First Samuel. Chapter 17, we are reading from verse 32 
to 37. If you're there, say amen. If you lied, say I'm sorry. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 17 from verse 32 to 37. Are we there? Ama tunangoja hii Bible ya TV. Oh, okay. It's all right. So, <laughs> so I'll read from verse 32. It says, David, say, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy. And he has been fighting he has been a fighting man from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. If you're having your Bible, you can underline that phrase. Because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the power of the lion and the power of the bear will deliver me from the hands of this Philistine. Saul so said to David, go and the Lord be with you. And this is the word of God. Yes, today I want to conclude uh, the talk on sustaining a life of freedom. It is something that we've been looking at now for about four Sundays when we talk about sustaining a life of freedom. And the first thing that we said that one need to do in order to sustain a life of freedom is to ensure that the house is occupied. And I say that this house is you and me based on the scripture that we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in our lives. And so we must ensure that the Holy Spirit occupies this house all through. So that when the evil spirit comes to reoccupy the house from where it was driven away, then he is going to find somebody in that house and that is the Holy Spirit. And therefore, it will not have any space to occupy. The other thing that we say is that be under a cover. Yeah? Be under a cover. And I say that a cover are those who plays shepherd roles over us. And I talk of the parental cover, that you are under a cover of your parents. You know, whatever they speak to you, it happens. Why? Because they are playing a shepherd role. So if you are under a cover, then you share in the grace of that cover. Whatever they speak over you happens. If they speak a blessing, you get a blessing. So I say that for you to sustain a life of freedom, then you must be under a cover. And from the previous teachings, we realized that some of the frustrations and the struggles that we have today were as a result of what our covers spoke. So there were different covers that I talk about, parental cover, priestly cover, I play a role, a shepherd role over you as a priest. And there is that priestly cover and then there is the kingly uh, covering. The, th uh, the third thing that we said was guard your gates. Yeah? If you want to sustain a life of freedom, make sure that your gates are guarded. And we spoke of different gates that brings uh, uh, slavery into our lives that we really needed to be very careful of. We talked of the gate of the mind. We talked of the dedicated items. We talked of sin and cults and occults. And today, I just want us to move to the last item on what we need to do in order to sustain a life of freedom. And this is know who you are. Now, the text that we've just read it's quite an interesting story. If you have time, you can just read the entire of it from uh, verse 1 of chapter 17. Uh, Israel were in continuous war with the Philistine. And I think it's something that even continues up to now. It has really not ended. And then this war, uh, there were different approaches to war in the early times. 
One could be the armies just come and attack the armies of the opponent, that is armies versus armies, and we, uh, whichever army is, uh, has won will capture the people of those lands and make them slaves in their own nation. But then the other approach to the wars that were being fought then was that you produce your uh, you are, uh, you are, you are starring. Hmm? You learn se mwenya kufangi. You learn se mwenya kipigwa hapigiki. You produce the, past, the strongest person from your side, and then the opponent also brings in the strongest person on their side. And when these two people fight, then whoever wins, automatically the army, uh, the opponent's army would lose, even if this fight was only between two people. But this, the, uh, the person who wins then that victory goes to the entire nation, to the entire army from where that person comes. It's just like sports, you know. Most of us, we don't go to run in these marathons, but then if some Kipchoge wins the other side, Sini Kenya, Sisi Water to celebrate, yeah? For the few occasions that I've gone to uh, the, the Western nations, then Unafika, Wanaskul, Metoka, Kenya, they just think that you are also a runner, huh? in all this. But because there is a Kenyan who won, then that victory is ascribed even to a meda who does not run. You know? but, but, <laughs> but because this person won, we share in that victory. That was the approach, one of the other approaches. And the text that we read now gives us the latter approach. An approach where Philistines brings Goliath, and then the Israelites did not know who to bring because Goliath was quite a huge person. He was somebody, as Saul confesses, that has been into war since he was a boy. In terms of experience in relation to war, Goliath had it. In terms of the armory, he had all the armory that is necessary. In fact, if you read that story uh, through to the end, there is a point that David says that Goliath is coming with the shield, with the spear, and with the sword. You know, he had all the armor. So he had the stature, in other words, the strength that somebody would require to fight. He had the experience, and he also had the armory. Then, because Israelites did not have somebody that could withstand him, they were back into slavery again. And this is what I'm really trying to discourage us from. You know, these are people that were taken out of Egypt where they were slaves. God walked with them all through the wilderness and gave them a land that was flowing with milk and honey. And they were having their own rulers, King Saul. They were no longer under the rulers of other nations. They were leading their lives. They were independent but something happens that brings them into slavery again. They could not fight Goliath. And therefore they became like slaves to Goliath. And that is what we are trying to say no to. That God had already delivered us. We experienced God's freedom in relation to family related uh, curses or strongholds. And we do not want to get back to that slavery again. So because of the strength of Goliath. These people, the Israelites, were enslaved again because they could not do anything. They were under his mercies. They were losing it. And to lose would mean you are taken captive. Then here comes a man called David. In fact, he was not a man. Saul describes him as a boy. So he arrives when his father sent him to go and pay a visit to his brothers. When he arrives, then he realizes that there is a contest here. There is somebody that is required to fight. But then no one was ready to face him. In fact, his being there was a risk because only men were in that place. But David is coming in as a boy. But something about David, it's very clear that he knew he was a boy. It's very clear if you read that story that he knew he was not a soldier or a military person as to the description of the Philistines and the Israelites. But there is something unique that David knew. David knew who he was. I loved it when he said that this Philistine cannot defy the armies of the Lord. 
that made the difference. His brothers and other soldiers never knew that the person that Goliath wanted to face were not just ordinary soldiers. They were the armies of the living God. And David knew his position quite clear. And he said, man, you are coming with all these clubs. You are coming with all these shields. You are coming with the spear. But remember, you are not facing me as a boy. You are facing the army of the Lord. And this God has never been defeated. Hallelujah. David stood with a testimony. And he started telling Saul that, you know what? There was a time I was looking after the, the, the flock of my dad. A lion came and a bear came. Then I struck them. Something interesting that you need to note. David said that the same God, listen to this, the same God who enabled me to kill the lion and the bear is the same God that is going to deliver this Philistine into my hands. So David was so clear of who he is that he was not standing as a representation of the house of Jesse. He was not standing as a representation of Israel. He was standing as a representation of God. And this God has never been defeated. Beloved, if you get to know who you are, then you shall sustain a life of freedom. Hallelujah. If you get to know who you are, you'd be able to sustain a life of freedom. So I was thinking about this. The Lord reminded me of a story. <clears throat> there, there were two friends, and they were both born again. But one of them was under the influence of her grandmother's spirit, who was a witch doctor and wanted to transfer the same spirit into the grandchild. So what happened is that this grandchild got born again. The grandchild got born again. And so, this spirit continued to frustrate this lady. Why? Because as far as the grandmother is concerned, this lady must become a witch. Now, something that interesting happened. Instead, when this lady was being prayed for, there was a very close friend of hers, and they were in the same room. What happened is that this spirit left the grandchild, the actual grandchild, and fell into the friend. He can manipulate. So this girl could not sleep. Remember, she's not even related to this family. But she couldn't sleep. Alkwanambia, the earliest angelala, nisakuminambili asubui, now you wonder. Yo utalala amutaenda kazini, kushugulika amutaenda shule, she was still a student. So when this lady came and began giving me this story, I simply told her that I wish you could have known who you are. Because that in itself makes the difference. So I told her two things. Number one, you are, when you are born again, you cease in the spiritual realm, you cease to be the child to your parents. <laughs> you didn't get that. I'm saying in the spiritual realm, if you are looking for Maurice Ameda, you are not going to find me. In the spiritual realm, I'm Maurice God. My surname is God. Why? Because God is my father. And the scripture says that to all who received him, to all who believed in him, he gave the right to become children of God. So the moment I believe in Christ, the moment I receive him, then in the spiritual realm, my surname changes. I am no longer the son of a murder in Sierra County. In the spiritual realm, the enemy sees me in that level and he sees a child of God. So I told this person that can you, are you aware that you are not a child of a human being? You are a child of God because the spirits that is attacking you do not attack you in the physical world, but in the spiritual world. Number two, you have no relations. The show was called Wanjiko. You have no relations with this Wanjiko. And therefore, the Wanjiko does not have a right over you. She might have a right over the grandchild because there is a blood connection. But for you, it cannot happen. 
So in other words, what the devil was doing was to frustrate somebody who was not aware of who she was as far as the spiritual world is concerned. She only needed to know those two facts. Beloved, after convincing and she believed like exactly, I do not belong. As far as I believe in Christ, I do not belong uh, to, to, to the bloodline of this world. I belong to the bloodline of Christ. I have no connection with the bloodline of this social who wants somebody to be a witch. Those were the two understandings and convictions that brought freedom in the life of this girl. In fact, from that day after the prayers, she became so free. Ata saizi kaongezeka. Sisemi wenye wakona mwili tudogo ni mapepo wanawasumbua. But <laughs> because she could now sleep. Yeah? I remember where enda ulale. And in case umeamuka usiku, just call me. We are going to pray and then you will find your, your sleep. I remember telling her, like God grants sleep to those he loves. Do you believe that God loves you? Then why are you missing this sleep? Somebody, a spirit somewhere is denying you what is rightfully yours. If you know who you are, then nothing is going to scare you. You are not going to be afraid of anything. By the way, me nikingia kwa hii compound, na ingia nga nakare jingine, you nimejua, nindio kusema huku hivi. So, no one would question me. Because sari nimejua where I would go, I know the level, the position that I hold, and so I have nothing to fear. So, if you know who you are, then nothing is going to scare you. Demons would come and you stand facing them. They are not going to make you be timid because you will tell them that I am a child of God. That no weapon fashioned against me is going to prosper. You are going to tell these spirits that whoever lives in me is greater than him that is in the world. You are going to tell the spirits of the enemy when they make you feel how sinful you are. You will tell them that you know what? There is no condemnation to them that has believed. You are going to tell them that I am a friend of God. That the Holy Spirit lives in me. He dwells in my life. And therefore no demon then is going to scare you. I tell you beloved, if you do not know who you are, haki mapepo wataku frustrate. Mapepo wataku frustrate. I remember one time, just as I approached the end, Numoja, I was, uh, that's the church that I fellowshiped as a youth just before I found ways to go to, uh, to college. So we used to have fellowships every Saturday. House fellowships. I don't know whether it was Saturday or Thursdays, but one of the days. And so there was a time that a fellowship went to one of the members and she had a house help that was from the coast and was possessed <laughs> by the marine spirit. Sasa, uyu mwenye nyumba kaelezea the leader of the service. I was not there. I didn't attend that fellowship. But he, uyu msana wangu, ni kama ako, ako na mapepo. Na nataka tumuombe, akue huru. So, when this was brought... <laughs> When they started praying, there's no good Anglicans. We don't know much about the manifestation of the spirits. In fact, zikianza kumanifest, tunanza kudao tuwo mwenya naomba ndio ziaze kumanifest. Uyu ni mtu wa mungu kweli. As if we think that it's only demons that have powers. So when these demons started manifesting, everyone in the house became timid. They forgot who they were in Christ. They became timid. And the spirit realized that. Na kuambia walicharazu wa kwa hiyo nyumba. And this lady removed all the clothes. Anaenda kwa bafu, anachukua maji, anajimuagilia, anamuagilia hawa ingine. When they are praying in kiswaili, anacheka. Ati yebubi wa sikia kiswaili chao hawa ni wabara. Just imagine a demon doing that. And every, people are just so scared and they are just there watching. One of them later called me like, where were you? Umejua ni nini lifanyika kwa fellowship jana? And I was like, hey, 
It is not about me. It's about who you are in Christ. If they could have just known that this demon is under them, because the person that the demons fears is not your pastor, is not your anointed woman or man of God, is the Christ that lives in this person. And this is the, the moment that I keep saying that after you've been set free, you know, sometimes you could be in a fellowship like this and the message is being preached, you are prayed for and you are free. But if Christ does not live in you, the moment you leave that door going back to your home, utapata mapepo wa mekungojea pale kwa gate. Because the only thing they fear is somebody that has Christ. And that is why one time the seven sons of Scavers got really worried because they thought that it was just being easy, something easy to cast out. But the demons told them that we know Paul and also that Jesus that you are talking about, but who are you? So demons fear Christ. They fear Christ. So if you understand your position in that Christ, I tell you, you will enter into places and they would acknowledge. The enemy is going to call for backup. Ukingia kwa kanisa yote. Ukingia within an estate. Ukingia kwa hiyo kazi. Ukingia into that business, into that institution where you're working. The enemy will know that somebody has come in. There is somebody that is around that possesses the spirit of God. And therefore, lazima jipange. You know, I hate making demons comfortable in my presence. And if they are, then it simply means that the level of the spirit of God in me is so minimal. You know, we need to make them get disturbed. Praise the Lord. Let spirits, evil spirits get disturbed at St. Philip's. That when they are around, they are worried because they do not know what you're about to do. One time when they saw Jesus, they cried out even before Jesus spoke to them that please don't cast us out of this person because they recognize and acknowledge Jesus Christ. Beloved, in order to sustain a life of freedom, we must know who we are in Christ. We must know who we are in Christ. These spirits are going to acknowledge that that is not someone that you play around with. He has Christ in him. He has Christ in him. That is a child of God. That is a friend of God. There is somebody that is protected by the power of God. Know who you are. That is all that made David different from his brothers, from the armies. Probably they were looking at how much they are so weak. They are looking at how much they didn't have the proper armory. They were looking at how much they didn't have the proper experience. But they didn't know who they are in God. And that is what gave David victory. It can give you victory. It can give me victory. I just want us to rise on our feet. Thank you, gracious and everlasting Father. Not certain of what battles you've experienced in your life. Just think through them, the battles that have pushed you so hard. To the point of almost giving up. Please, before you give up, just ask yourself who you are. That would make a difference. It would make a difference. Are you aware that you are the child of God? And the God we are talking about is the creator of the entire universe. Are you aware that Christ calls you friend? Are you aware that you, you are secure in Christ? Are you aware that you are free and that there is no condemnation? Are you aware that he says that all things work together for your good as long as you love him? Are you aware that you cannot be separated from the life, love of Christ? Are you aware that you are born of God? And the evil one cannot touch. Are you aware how you're significant to this Christ? That he couldn't spare his own life. How you are important to God. That he couldn't spare his own son. Are you aware that even if you are, you are the only human being existing on earth. 
Christ could have still died for you. The same death that he died for everyone. That God could have still released his son to come and die for you. That is how important you are for this God. Are you aware that you are a co-worker with God? Are you aware that you can do all things through Christ that gives you strength? Are you aware that this Christ can never forsake you? Are you aware that he paid it all for our sins? Are you aware that the reason he watches over us is because he wants us safe? He wants us to be reconciled with him. He wants us to be united with him. Beloved, I do not know that which is pushing you so hard that makes you feel that this God is not good enough. If you knew who you are in Christ, beloved, you are going to stand strong. You are not going to give up. You are going to keep pushing because you know that as long as you fight on the side of Christ, victory is assured. You might fall. You might be hurt. You might bleed in the process of fighting. But if you belong to the army of Christ, it doesn't matter how muddy you become in this war. It doesn't matter how much you are injured. It doesn't matter how much you are crushed. It doesn't matter how much you lack. But as long as you are on the side of Christ, victory is assured. He was so crushed. He bled. He even cried that God has forsaken him. But at the end of everything, he victoriously arose and the powers of darkness were defeated. That is the same Christ that we believe in. He is the same Christ that can give you that victory. We are living in a tough season where sicknesses, especially the COVID-19, has pushed us down to our knees. But remember, the Lord is our healer. We are living in luck. Some of us have lost their jobs. But remember, uh, he is the Lord, our provider. Beloved, we are coming into a tough time. Some of us have even lost their relatives and they did not even have enough time to mourn. But remember, the Lord that we are talking about, he is the father of all comfort. He can be able to comfort you. The word says that he heals the brokenhearted. He says uh, that his grace is sufficient even at the times of weakness. Sometimes these, uh, these, these weaknesses, sometimes this pain might not go. But the Lord we are talking about is able to sustain you even in the midst of that pain. He can keep you. He sustained uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Daniel in the den of lions remained safe even though he was exposed exposed to this pain, they remained safe in the Lord. And that is the God that we are serving. That is the God that we believe in. And therefore, beloved, you have no reason to be afraid. You have no reason to be scared because victory is assured. I just want you to begin speaking to that spirit that has been intimidating you, that has been making you think that you're losing it, that has been making you think that you're not making it. Tell that spirit that I can do all things through Christ because I am a child of God. That spirit that has been making you think that you are so of a sinner that you cannot do anything in the house of the Lord. Tell that spirit that you've been forgiven and tell him that even though your sins are as red as scarlet, the Lord can make them be as white as snow. Tell them that you are not condemned because the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. You can just surrender to the Lord and thank him because of who you are in him. Oh Lord God Almighty, we bless your holy name because we are your children. We are your friends, oh God. We are co-workers with you. We are not condemned. We have all the power. You said, Lord, that all power is given unto us. We are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit and therefore no demon is going to scare us. No demon He's going to scare us. We shall not be afraid. We are not giving up. We shall push on. Even if we have a reason enough to give up, we are not going to do it because the Lord our God is our victory. Lord God Almighty, may you minister to our hearts, O oh God. May you encourage that person that is feeling down. May you be a source of hope, O oh God. And you say that hope does not disappoint. O oh Lord God Almighty, you intervene in every situation. We do not want to be enslaved again. 
Oh yes, Riba Kante Kere Bobo. We honor you and we glorify your name. Thank you, gracious and everlasting God. Thank you, oh my Lord and my Father. I bless your holy name. I bless your holy name. Do not listen to the voice of the enemy. I'm speaking to this person. I don't know that which you did and you feel that you are so sinful before the Lord. In fact, you know that you have a special area of calling, but you've never offered yourself freely to serve the Lord. Because any time you try to do that, a voice speaks to you that you are so a sinner that God is not going to listen to you. The voice speaks to you that people might know that which you've already done and therefore you've become so scared. You've lost the courage to serve the Lord. Hear the voice of the Lord today. Your sins are forgiven and the Lord cannot remember them. The Lord says that His mercy is on you every morning. His word tells me that is faithful. If we, if we confess our sins, uh, the Lord is faithful and just uh, to forgive us. Let the enemy not keep lying to you that your sins are not forgiven. They are forgiven. Do not listen to that voice. That is a lie of the enemy. And the reason he lies, because he knows that your blessings is attached to the service of the Lord. That the grace of God upon you shall be received in the service of him. He doesn't want you to get it. He doesn't want you to receive it. And therefore he stops you from experiencing the favor of the Lord in the areas of his service. Thank you, oh God. I bless and I honor your name. Do not succumb come to that area of weakness. God is able to strengthen you. God is not interested in your ability, but is just interested in your availability. When he calls you, he calls you in your weakness. When you avail yourself to him in brokenness, then he's able to empower you. When you read the scripture, there is no person that was called and felt good enough to serve. All of them felt inadequate. Do not succumb to the spirit of inadequacy. Adequacy. Do not succumb to the grasshopper mentality. God can give, use you the way you are. He can give you that victory in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, Baba. Thank you, Rima Kante Kere Bobo. Oh, yes, Lord Diba Kanta. I'm speaking to this person. You are afraid of giving your life to Christ because anytime you think of it, the enemy reminds you that you are going to backslide. He reminds you that you are not going to make it. He shows you many other people that have turned away from Christ and has convinced you in your heart that you are also not going to make it and you believe it. You have been enslaved because of that. But today, remember what sustains us in this journey of faith is not our own strength, but it is by the grace of God. The scripture says that he shall not allow anyone to snatch us from his hands. And remember anyone includes even you. Do not succumb to the fear of the enemy. God wants you to continually and steadfastly live a life of freedom and therefore do not feel condemned that is a lie of the enemy do not feel inadequate that is a lie of the devil come to him believe in him that is able to give you that victory that is able to empower you can you remember Peter a man who was always ready to go back fishing the Lord empowered him and he preached and 3,000 people came to Christ. Have you forgotten about Moses? A man who could not speak well, but the Lord used him to deliver the people of Israel from Egypt. Do you not know about Jeremiah who was just a young person, but the Lord called him into the ministry of prophecy and he was able to prophesy, to uproot and to plant, to destroy and to build that which the Lord instructed him. What in your mind do you think that the Lord cannot do? The Lord is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or imagine. Do not allow yourself to get back to the life of slavery because our God did everything that is necessary for our freedom. 
gracious Savior, we praise and we honor your name because behold, you are doing something new in our lives. Thank you, gracious and everlasting Father. I speak your total freedom in the lives of your people. I speak, Lord, out of your revelation that they are going to know who they are in you, that none of them shall stand scared in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise and we honor your holy name. Oh, yes, Daddy. How I bless and I honor you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jehovah. We praise you because you are Jehovah. You are mighty warrior, O oh God. Jehovah is your name. You are a mighty warrior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jehovah is your name, O oh Lord. You are mighty warrior, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jehovah is your name. Declare 
Declare that he is a mighty warrior. Declare that he is a mighty warrior. Declare that he is a mighty warrior. Oh yes, that's so great. We bless you, Lord. Jehovah. Oh, you are mighty warrior. Oh yes, Lord. We praise your name. Give him that sickness and he's going to fight it for you. Give him that luck and he's going to provide for you. Give him whatever you think is the toughest battle for you and he's going to go fight it. Give him that sin and he's going to cleanse it. Oh, yes, Lord. We bless you. Holy Spirit of God, have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit of God. Oh, give your people victory. 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 Give your people victory, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. You are rewarded. So great in battle. Jehovah. Raise your name. Jehovah is your name, mighty warrior. Jehovah is your name. We want to thank God for our vicar, the Reverend Maurice Ameda, for allowing the Spirit of God to use him in such a great way. And particularly this Wednesday, when we are coming to the final of the series Sustaining freedom. And I believe each and every one of us has been blessed. Me personally, I've been blessed. And for those who have been blessed, let us give the Lord a round of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. Louder. You can do better. Thank you so much. Indeed. Indeed, our God has blessed us so much. And I believe each and every one has been following all those series and the teachings that our vicar has been able to give us. And he has told us, even as he ends this, that do you know who you are? Because that's important. And also your spiritual surname. That revelation is powerful. That in front of our names, there's the name of God. And if you know who we are, then it's never going to be impossible for us to remain in freedom. So I want to ask us to come forth and even as we meditate upon that word, worship our God with our giving. And for those who are watching us out there, I want to remind you, our pay bill number is 734618. The account, you can either put your name, 
the maybe offering, thanksgiving, or tithe, and we'll continue being blessed by the Lord. So I want to invite the praise and worship team to continue waiting on us even as we give and worship our God with our giving. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you know who you are? Yes. Who are you? Tell yourself I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise and team, worship team for that very inspiring music. Before I invite our vicar for the benediction, I would like to make some announcements. And the announcements are we have three services uh, on Sunday. 
The first service will start at 7 o'clock. The second service will start at 8 a.m. And the third service will start at 10 a.m. You're all invited and being reminded that it will be services will be led by the faith group. So come even to uh, stand with them in their ministry. The vicar is also requesting us to continue bringing the dry foods so that we can be able to help some of us who have been uh, who have had challenges because of the COVID-19. He's also requesting us to remember the Sunday school. The Sunday school has had a large influx of uh, children and some of them do not have a place to sit on. So he's asking that uh, you stand with them with that ministry by buying a seat which is worth 800 shillings you can be able to maybe use our pay bill and on the account you write chairs or Sunday school and that money will be able to reach but if you can be able to come to church you'll find Jane will assist you and he also says that he's in the office you can be able to come and pray and uh, fellowship with him so I want to invite him now to come and do the benediction and the final prayer. Uh, thank you, Charles, uh, for that opportunity. I was to start on a new uh, teaching next Wednesday, but God is just leading me. We have a declaration Wednesday. Declaration Wednesday is, you know, the written word is called Logos. That is what you read in the scripture. But there is that which is called Rema, the living word. Now, what makes the word living is when it's spoken. You remember sometimes, Baka was telling you that when you speak a word, then the spirit that agrees with that word picks it up and acts upon it and therefore it makes that word an experience in our lives. So on the basis of all the things that we've learned, I'll just prepare some declaration uh, sentences and phrases, and I will just want us to do that on Wednesday. So please, you must not miss on Wednesday. We are going to make whatever we've learned as logos be a living word. I know the praise team, I gave you a different topic. Whoever would be leading, just tell him or her uh, to, we're just going to make declarations uh, of what we've learned upon our lives. So we'll have a session of worship. Then after that, I will not preach anything. I will just come to lead us into these declarations so that this word we hear and we read would not just be in books, but it shall be also in our lives. So thank you very much for coming. Hope to see you again next week. Invite more friends. Tell them not to be afraid. The Lord is with us. You just need to do what is expected of you in terms of the guidelines. Have your masks on, uh, wash your hands, sanitize, and social distancing. And then the rest we leave to who? To God. And he is with us. We shall remain safe. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for that which we've learned through this season. Our desire still remains to be free and be free indeed. Lord God Almighty, we also thank you for these, your servants, that were able to make it today. I pray, Lord, for your favor and protection, even as we prepare to go home. And the joy, the peace that we've experienced here, Lord, let it continually remain in our lives. Father, I also thank you for your continual provision to us. And that which we've given, Lord, is just but a portion of your blessings. I pray, Lord, that let this be a seed that would germinate to different areas of needs that we have in our hearts, that none of us would ever regret having given to you, O oh gracious Lord. Father in heaven, we are looking forward, Jehovah God, to moments of great testimonies of the things that you've done in our lives. Now I pray that the peace of God which surpasses man's understanding, keep your souls and minds in the knowledge and love of God the Father and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to be with you and remain among you always. Amen. Beloved, as you go, 
go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. There are people that I talked about in the Word of Knowledge session, so please, I didn't really ask that you raise up your hands, but then if you would wish to have a discussion with me, feel free to call Jane or even myself so that we can create a time for a meeting and more discussions. Thank you. Have a lovely night.